You see it? Okay. You're loud. Hey, every, hey everybody. Welcome to uh, uh, our Get a Real Estate Life uh, interviews. Uh, we're excited. Uh, Jenny Williams and I have been, uh, uh, we had a great interview yesterday. I'm excited about my friend today. We've got a full week of uh, shelter-in-place interviews, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Jenny Williams, hello. Good morning. Well, or good morning. Good afternoon. <laughs> Welcome. And we've got a special guest today out of Carrollton, Georgia, Mr. Uh, Rhett Harmon of Century 21 Novus Realty. What's up, Rhett? What's going on, Gusty? How you guys doing? Man, doing great. Man, we're so Thank glad to guys. have you and hope you and your family are stay are staying safe and healthy. Absolutely. How about yours? We're doing good, man. We're doing good. We're staying sane. Good. Well, actually, <laughs> we're social distancing from the lake right now. So we have a, a little house um, in Wadawi, Alabama. It's about 45 minutes from Carrollton. So uh, it's spring break yeah. this week. So, uh, you know, we might as well keep our family together and enjoy some time in the water. I'm actually sitting on my boat in the driveway. I was going to put it in the water, but the lake's a little down right now. And I had a couple other calls. So we're kind of at the top of a hill. So I have good service right here. So that's what we're going with. <laughs> that's a perfect place to do it. <laughs> Perfect. I'm, Jenny, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not able to hear you. I hear Gusty okay. Okay. Well, okay. you may have to ask the questions since um, you. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Well, hey, um, you know, I just uh, I appreciate you taking your time and, and jumping on. And, you know, especially with everything that's going on right now, I just feel like this is a perfect time for us to really grow and learn from each other. And, you know, I know we've, uh, we've been friends for a good while and, and, um, you know, I, I want everybody, you know, uh, some of the folks that might be watching this may not know who Rhett Harmon is. So Rhett, why don't you tell, kind of tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, um, and we'll go from there. Absolutely. Thank you, Gusty. I um, appreciate you guys having me on this few, few bugs out here. Sorry about that. Now I'm out here in, uh, uh like I said, Lake Wadawa right now, but, uh, Carrollton, Georgia is about 45 miles west of Atlanta. Um, I've been selling real estate since 2001. I have a degree from the University of West Georgia in real estate, a bachelor's of business administration. I had the opportunity to get started early, and uh, I love it. Uh, you know, you find out what you love to do, then figure out how to make money at doing it, and that's what real estate has been for me. So I had a chance to uh, work with a few different uh, companies along the way, um, had a, a, a great ride with a lot of it, and then we all obviously got kind of bit by the uh, – the last recession, the previous one we had, which was, uh, you know, a lot different than the one we're in now, of course. But uh, uh, that uh, changed a lot. Uh, really got a chance to humble me a little bit um, uh, from a standpoint of not working so much. You know, working 120 hours a week to be that top producer was, uh, you know, it just wasn't really worth it. Doing everything on your own, uh, it, it made me appreciate so much more about working smarter, not harder. Uh, uh, opportunity to be a lot of involvement uh, with the Association of Realtors. I was our local president uh in 2012, got a chance to, uh, you know, be involved with uh, YPM, which is kind of how Gusty and I got a chance to meet uh, years ago yeah. uh, through stuff at Birmingham. And uh, um, gosh, just uh, you know, during the recession, I guess, previous to bring that up again, we started a property management company then. And that really kind of gave us a chance to really uh, build a different kind of business that was much more recession resistant. And then we're able to then br uh, bring that forward into uh, end of 2014, we started uh, the brokerage. And the main reason we got a chance to start the brokerage was uh, my business partner, uh, Curtis North and I, we uh, just couldn't find the, the, the place that we really uh, wanted to work in our market. So we had to create it. And uh, we both enjoy selling real estate and never made that uh, a secret. And uh, we have a great uh, team in place, got a great managers uh, for the office, um, great property managers, a lot of, a lot of staff. And uh, you have a managing broker that kind of helps handle everything that does not sell. But uh, I run a sales team. And that's really what I enjoy doing. Uh, doing a lot of fun and creative marketing is kind of what we uh, wanted to do when we started the uh, the brokerage and, and, and involving video. So we started uh, video very heavily in 2014, and we wanted to be known as uh, trying to become the community expert. So the name that we chose for our brokerage, Novus, uh, we chose the meaning new and exceptional in Latin. And basically, we wanted to uh, you know do a video series bringing the community to you the Novus way. We use the hashtag the Novus way, and we interview local business owners local community happenings, why is it great to live and work in our area? And that is the, the primary uh, focus we have put into our advertising and doing this professionally. And then, you know, kind of coming full circle with that, taking a lot of that content, I, I went really heavy with different social media platforms and coming back around to uh, get, you know, learning YouTube. So it's, it's always a constant challenge with this stuff. So uh, hopefully that wasn't too long of an intro. 
it's perfect. No, that's awesome, man. Well, t- yeah, tell us a little bit. So you're running a brokerage. Um, is this a? Are you running a team and a brokerage, or just a brokerage? Yes, yeah, so our brokerage has. Uh, we're almost at fifty agents now. So, um, and my sales team is about five um, uh, of those fifty. So, okay. we do have. I've got a business partner that I own the brokerage with fifty fifty, and uh, we do have a managing broker. Uh, sales manager for the agents. We have a uh, property manager and then we have, you know, several um, agent teams and several just individual agents that work, uh, you know, directly with us. Uh, but I kind of view it as I'm in the trenches with them. You know, we're trying to uh, do do similar things and show them like, look, lead by example, I guess, you know, th- there's enough business for everyone to be prosperous, regardless of, uh, of where you work or what the market is. And we try to view it as, um, you know, we want to be very inclusive. We want to show you guys what are we doing that works. Uh, I enjoy going to a lot of the uh, real estate events across the country. And I know we've been at several of them together and, and really get a chance to just get with uh, with like minds and understand what, what they're doing and how they're doing things at a better and higher level and bring that back to our agents. And, and most importantly, all the customers that we serve. Yeah. And, that's, um, and you see Vicki Harris says, um, thank you, Red. And Rob Layton says, hello. Are you able to hear Jenny? I can't hear Jenny at all. I hear you great, but for some reason I don't know all what's right. going on. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm sorry. She, anyways, she's um, uh, Vicki Harris said uh, thank you, Rhett, and Rob says hello. So um, uh, Rob Layton. So thank you all yeah, for watching. Hey, if, if anybody has any questions that are watching right now, just uh, shoot us a message in the um, in the comments section, and we'll get uh, we'll, we'll ask that to Rhett. But you know. You know, especially with everything that's going on right now, what, what do you what do you say to your team members and, and your brokerage? What do you to keeping them you know keeping them inspired? Well, you know, I think uh, obviously it's it's challenging times all the way around because we just don't really know what to expect or what to do. And I, I think a lot of it is just um, you know trying to be transparent as possible, trying to abide by what we need to do, try to be realistic. Um, don't want to come across as too salesy. Don't want to come across as trying to endanger anyone or anyone's family. Um, but at yep. the same time, be smart about um, you know staying in touch with your your past clients, stay in touch with the clients you work with now, find out what's going on. Um, you know, I I'm primarily uh, you know I am in production, but I mostly work with with sellers. But every now and then I do have some sellers that, that I work with as a as a buyer representative also. But I've had a few that like we have a seller we sold their home, it's under contract. They're they they're gonna be homeless May the fourth, so we had to find them uh, a property. So we had to be very cautious and make sure that we we took the time and abided by anyone that would allow us to come see their home and uh, you know, just take whatever precautions are necessary. And, and uh, you know, things like wearing gloves and masks and uh, walking around with Clorox wipes anytime we touch anything to make sure that it's, it's been wiped down. And uh, you know, really, I think just as much as possible, not uh, you know, really making sure that it's a necessity, not just someone that wants to go around to look at something for, for, for no good reason. Um, at the same time, stay safe yourself, stay healthy. Um, but, but use this time uh, yeah, as a blessing to spend a little bit of time with your family. Um, but, but, but don't let your business just completely be in vacation mode. You know, you've got to stay in touch with people. Use this time to create some video content, uh, brushing up on some of your skills, uh, learn some of the technology that we, we provide a lot of stuff and our, our corporate entity century 21 provides a lot of stuff back to our agents. And we want to make sure that, uh, they take the time to, to learn and use these things. If you're busy and productive, you can't take the time to really learn how to use all the tools to the full effect. You know how to scratch the surface with them and use some of the most basic and most important functions, but the extra little things that you can dig a little deeper on, it's amazing how much time that'll save you if you, uh, you know, take just a few hours each week and uh, just retrain yourself. I, I think that's what we're trying to do. I, I'd love to ask you the same question. What are you guys kind of saying uh, around your office? Because I'm, I'm trying to learn as well because, you know, you want to be a good leader, but at the same yeah. time, you have to reach out to other good leaders to find out what they're doing. Yeah, you know, that is a great question. I think what we're doing is, you know, each each person is a little bit different. Each person right. is a little bit more comfortable with showing right now. Um, so it really just depends on what their level is. It depends on what the level their client is. And so, you know, we're offering the, hey, we'll do a FaceTime for you. Um, you know, if, if they do want to see it in person, we prefer that it's only the decision makers. Um, you know, we don't want a bunch of folks just coming through uh, the house. Um, we're not doing open houses right now. Um, so we're just trying to do things that are a little bit more virtual um, and uh, just trying to we're just adapting um, and just playing it smart. You know, I mean, I think that's what it really boils down to is, you know, hey, we've got a long career ahead of us. Um, you know, we're all learning uh, through this together. 
and uh, we just got to be smart. So I, I, um, I love it. That virtual thing is, is so important right now. I mean, being able to adapt and thankfully we've, we're fairly virtual in a lot of the stuff that we do as far as our systems go, but uh, you just got to get kind of crafty and creative too. Um, uh, we've had some scenarios where had a listing and the people I looked for no reason whatsoever, they want anyone inside their home. I was like, all right, fair enough. We do have the visual tour that we put together, the 360 or the Rico tours or whatever the agent's using for that. But uh, sometimes you got to get a little bit deeper, all right? Talk to the seller and let's, uh, let's give a, a two minute description about your kitchen and tell us why you really love this kitchen and why you designed it the way you did and give us some more angles that aren't really, can't really be picked up from the actual, you know, tour. And make these little micro videos so that when we do have someone that we've we've been able to just reach out to us that, you know, in, in part of the pre-screening process and utilize some of these extra pictures or extra, um, you know, video images, it really does help. And, and it keeps everyone as safe as possible. Then, like you said, only the decision makers are going back out when they're really ready to make a decision on what's there. Love that. That's right. So from the virtual standpoint, you said you've been been pretty much virtual for a while. Um, so what are some of the types of things that y'all are doing to, to stay a, not necessarily a virtual company because y'all, I mean, y'all are brick and mortar. We are brick and mortar, um, yes. But, but what are y'all doing more virtually now? Um, and thankfully, we, we really implemented this in the last, uh, you know, I guess in a, in a bigger way in the last year or so. But uh, taking the time, we use DotLoop for all of our forms, of course, and being, we're pretty much uh, paperless for, for the most part, even though we still like our paper for some aspects of things and, and you know, being able to, I love, I love plats and paper because you can kind of write on them and show people what they can do and things like that. But at the end of the day, having everything files, uh, documents uh, being turned in, everything is, uh, you know, through, through dot loop, but not just, um, you know, uh, you know, taking the forms that we have like the MLS forms and making sure that they're all interactive and making sure that everything can be submitted that way, being able to, um, you know, limit. There are certain staff that are still having to go to the office for certain things, depositing earnest money checks. I mean, there's different ways of doing things that we're trying to constantly improve upon. But, uh, you know, being able to, uh, you know, accept rent for all of our property management, we collect rental like 600 doors. Uh, we've been doing this for the last four or five years. We can collect most of our payments come in you know, some some type of way electronically. There are the few that like to bring them by the office or want the, the you know, the receipt printed out. Uh, we did stop all that, you know, about the time school decided to, uh, to not be open and, and we do have a, a drop box right. that gets checked uh, different times, but really just limiting the ability or not the ability, the need to have to interact directly with that person to make sure that the process gets completed. I think that's the most important uh, factor behind it. Uh, Zoom, we've been utilizing Zoom a lot. So our sales meeting, I led a sales meeting sitting from exactly right here this morning um, uh, or Tuesday <laughs> morning meeting uh, via Zoom. And, uh, you know, we were, we're you know, doing things talking about the CARES Act and how that may impact our agents and, and really just trying to stay as proactive and, and as positive as possible uh, through this, but also being as realistic as possible. Um, and, and that's some of the things that we're, we're trying our best to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jenny says brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Since you can't hear, you can you can at least see her. I can see her perfect. I don't see you guys, but I see, well, uh, but I can see her. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> so you can't even see. See, that's funny. Um, well, one of the things. Um, well, see, I wore a yellow. Uh, this was the closest gold I could get. I wore yellow for you, so I, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I, I would have had my, my crazy suit um, on, but it, the, the polyester doesn't work very good at the lake for some reason, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know that that's a great segue because I'm I am actually kind of disappointed that you didn't wear one of your suits, and and uh, you are kind of known for wearing flashy suits. How did you get into that? Man, it's kind of like a, a bad joke that never um, really ended, I guess, in a way. <laughs> um, several years back, um, some some friends of ours that we, uh, you know, uh, play on ball teams together, all the kids do and stuff like that, I guess. Um, we decided to do an ugly sweater party. And uh, one of the other parents said, hey, I think you would look good in this jacket, just being silly. And it was a sequined uh, blazer with like, Christmas lights on it. It had like sequins on the whole thing. It was the most ugly thing you've ever seen. And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll wear that. Order it for me. I'll, I'll you know, pay you back, whatever. So she ordered it and I walked to the party. Everybody loved it. And uh, it just got left at the office. A lot of times we utilize our office space for having get togethers and, and things like that. to try to you know, get people around as much as possible, being that we are brick and mortar for that, that standpoint. But anyway, um, uh, we, the p people love the picture on the Internet. And uh, my office manager had to get something from, I don't know, one of the local retail stores. So I said, hey, let's go get it. It's around Christmas time. So I just grabbed the jacket and threw it on. 
and went out in public and I, I'm not really sure we went to two or three stores picking out some things around the office and everybody went crazy for it. People were taking pictures in the stores and tagging me in it. And uh, <laughs> all of a sudden it just turned into, a, hey, hey, you need this one, right? You need this one. And then uh, I came across. Uh-uh. My, so my phone was ringing. Sorry, but it missed me for a minute. Uh, Shaughnessy showed up in my feed. And I'm like, wow, this is a great company. I really like what they're, uh, what they have to offer. And uh, now uh, I guess it turned into not just wearing the Christmas suits, but other uh, holidays and other events uh, turned into, you know, the Christmas parades, speaking on stages, showing it up and talking to, you know, our politicians for, uh, you know, our pack events and things like that at the Capitol and the national Capitol. So, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just kind of got known, known for that out of, uh, no other reason was more like a, just, a, uh, trying to be funny, I guess. And then people like kind of, you know, want to keep seeing it. So I think I've got about 40 something suits now that are basically like costumes. Um, I, I, I definitely call it marketing. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun for and my sure. team does this as well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> really so good. again, brilliant. I mean, that's right, but, but it is marketing because now the thing about it is people like, you know, we see each other at NAR events and stuff. People recognize you by your suits now. It's, it's funny. We did a video about wearing the suits for a couple of days in a row at a conference and then not wearing it. And then what the reaction is. So I like put on a really nice tailored suit that was, you know, a very nice suit. And uh, you're like, man, you look like crap today. Where's your, where's your fancy whatever? And it's like, you know, people like these $100, you know, party suits more than they do uh, actually looking, you know, professional. So it's just kind of funny. But, you know, the worst thing that we can do in our industry is to be forgotten. And, uh, you know, there's only so much we can talk about real estate to the, the general public before they just kind of get tired of it, or get turned off by it. If that's all we talk about or all we do. Um, obviously, that makes sense to to uh, people that are in the industry or people that are looking to buy or sell at the time. But you have to be memorable and people want to be able to be, you know, relate to you or see you in a more human standpoint. Um, like I, said, I call it random to real estate. You know, we, we talked a little bit about that. So YouTube yeah. channel, we, we put stuff on and uh, yeah, take the random things you do. And, you know, you know, bring it back to real estate, you know, find your people, find your tribe. I, I'm sitting in this boat. We like to go fishing, like to take my kids fishing. We make little yeah. videos about that or we, we post pictures about it. Other people that like fishing or at least like the idea of fishing or boating or whatever it is, or maybe they're just a parent and they see that I'm spending time as a, as a parent with, with my kids. Um, that makes me more relatable. Therefore, they will refer me to whatever it is I do for a living. It just so happens to be real estate. So that's kind of how I approach it. And it's a much more genuine way to stay in front of people. And, and it's a heck of a good way to, to, to network. I love networking, but it's amazing how the room will find me versus me having to find the room uh, or whoever in the, whoever's in the room that I want to talk to. It's kind of a neat uh, concept. Vicki says yeah. she's going to follow Rhett to um, see all of his suits. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could hear what she said. You can't hear me. You might want to tell him that somebody's following. uh, That's right. So Vicki, Vicki Harris is going to, she's going to follow you to see all your suits. And I'll tell you, like, I mean, I sent you a message recently. I mean, you had posted something for about St. Patrick's day and it was a St. Patty's day suit. And I just thought it was so cool. Um, So it, it does leave a lasting impact and that is marketing. Yep. That is absolutely marketing. And so, you know, what are some other things, you know, like I think you've done a great job of marketing yourself. What are some other suggestions for people to do marketing wise? Sure. Well, you know, there's marketing and there's also branding. So I kind of look at it as, uh, you know, I've kind of branded myself as being, you know, kind of a little bit out there, a little bit fun, uh, not afraid to kind of self self deprecate, you know, make fun of myself a little bit or act a little bit goofy, but it, when it's time to be serious, I can be serious as well. But, uh, uh, we really like to incorporate, uh, and this is something really, really done in the last year. Or so, uh, my sales team's called retro group. Um, and, uh, my team members, they like to, uh, well, they're, they're the willing to, we'll say, uh, wear a lot of these crazy outfits as well. The dresses that match the suits or, or some kind of a theme with it. So, uh, you know, I've never done the best job of, of keeping up with all the people I've ever worked with. It's just easy to get, get kind of just caught up in the next deal. And, uh, you know, uh, I guess December of 2018, I was kind of reached out to a lot of folks that I had email address for whatever, and just said, did a bomb bomb video. I said, Hey, look, not done the best job of keeping in touch with you guys where you've moved to let's, um, you know, what, send me your, your current mailing address and I'll forward you a holiday card or whatever. And, uh, and we did a little contest along with it with a Christmas pickle and all this other stuff. It's Christmas ornament thing. So had a hashtag to go with it, but I guess the, um, staying in touch with uh, our sphere of influence and database by sending out a quarterly card that has nothing to do with real estate that just basically says, 
you know, uh, follow us on social media for a good laugh every now and then or whatever. And uh, it, it's kind of fun how that has really uh, made an impact and branded us and really has made people remember, oh, yeah, um, I, I was happy with my agent last time. They were great. Yeah, let's call them again. Or they leave it sitting in the refrigerator and it, it shows up. Or we send them out to local restaurants and the restaurants pin them up in their, in their, uh, behind their bar and stuff. So it's kind of a neat little uh, concept and way to stay in front of people. You're still sending some out there, but I find it far more effective than just, than a just sold or just listed postcard. And we just do this quarterly and we usually have a, um, you know, I can't do anything halfway. I've got to go all in. So, uh, we'll do a whole, you know, campaign around it and have fun. This past Christmas, um, we did uh, Elf on a Shelf and we did like, you know, 28, 29 days of Elf on the Shelf. The Elf shows up Thanksgiving or day after Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and then leaves on Christmas Eve. And we had a photo shoot that we did and we all dressed up as the, as the Elf. And we had gotten a little trouble along the way and, you know, all within fun. I had some other uh, videos that went along with it and got other local businesses to, to chime in and have fun with us. So uh, little things like that, just trying to reach out and it involves the community video aspect of it back with the, you know, the branding of what we're trying to do. And it, it's, it works well because people, you know, kind of want to just see what we have going on. And it's a chance to kind of just laugh for a minute. And the people that don't get it, it's yeah. fine. They're not the people that, that we need to work with. There's plenty of other people they can work with. So that, that's what you just have yeah. to basically understand is, you know, I say the term, find your people, find your tribe, you know, find the ones that, that want to work with you. And, and life's much more enjoyable. And, uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of other a-holes to work with the a-holes that are going to be like, well, you know, let it, let it be that, you know, That's right. I that, um, uh, my love, Marilyn Boudreau said hello. Oh, uh, Marilyn Boudreau out of uh, Louisiana says hello. Hello, Marilyn. So, Good to see you. Um, yeah, you know, a-holes do find, uh, their, their friends, uh, they do. And, and they like to find their own tribe. That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you, you, I, video you have been very prevalent on and um, you know, c- can you talk about your kind of introduction into video? Because that is a main focus for you. Now there might be people that are watching that, you know, there's, st- I mean, I know people that are still scared of video. So, you know, kind of what was your process of getting in? And cause I mean, you're all in. It, you just have to be. And, and a lot of people think I just, I love, I, you know, I love video. I love video about like, I love my alarm clock, if that makes sense. Um, I love the effect that it has of making me get up in the morning. Cause I would sleep really late cause I like to stay up late, but uh, I like to get up and be productive and actually see that there's a result for me putting in my time and things are, are done, you know, mid morning by lunch, whenever that is. Um, same thing with video. You just have to, to have to kind of schedule it and do it. Um, there's all kind of things that we're all great at and there's all kind of things that we're not great at. Um, it just kind of comes with time. It, it, some things do come a little bit more natural to others, but gosh, I mean, I'm probably 800 professional videos in, you know, six years down the road from doing it. But that was from 2014. I started doing video in 2011 and I got too hung up on the production piece of it or, or it wasn't right. Or I was trying to make it sound much more than what it was and trying to really, do it the right way. And I didn't want to understand editing. Yeah, I know that's just not fun. And I failed miserably. I did a couple of them and then never really didn't see any, any uh, immediate results. And then kind of just let it, let it fall by the wayside and just kept doing the same old stuff I'd always done because it worked. But I think especially now with things getting to be much more, um, you know, distance, I guess, uh, between a lot of it. And I, I hope that changes back to the way it was, but it, who knows what it's going to be. Uh, I do know that yeah. video is a way that people can see your personality. They can see what you have going on. And there's a lot of different ways of doing it. You can uh, you know, show off what, what's going on and, and uh, you know, you just have to practice it. But uh, a crappy video, um, as long as you're not doing something inappropriate, is going to always trump no video at all. And you just have to take the time and, uh, and do it. And it's, it's, a, it's a consistency thing. And I, I can tell you, it's, it's a lot more socially acceptable among our profession and, and in general than it was, you know, six years ago doing this. You know, my camera guy. Uh, Gus, you got a chance to meet James. James is uh, from Jersey yeah. originally, and his parents were Haitian. James looks like an NFL linebacker, full dreadlocks. He's a big guy, so it's like you know, big guy walking around the camera. This little, sh- I'm like five seven on a good day, <laughs> walking around five eight, whatever. And uh, you know, it was like, what is this guy? What are they doing? Like, you know, show up. Hey, we want to do a video for you on your business. Um, and uh, people are like, well, what's the catch? What's this going to cost? And no, we just want to talk about what you have going on, and take the time to uh, really highlight. And, and promote what you're doing and eventually, okay, that makes sense. And then they would do it. Um, so we just had to k- pick a, a place to start, but th- it, it was amazing how many people just gave me you know, crap about it or who's this guy think he is or, or how arrogant, why do you think you can just walk in someone's business and just talk about them on social media, whatever, whatever the, because the, I the, the fun was. But at the end of the day, 
it really worked out well. And it really took about two years to really, really understand what we were going to really get from it. And it's still, there's things that we did years ago that haven't paid dividends yet. But uh, if you get a chance to take your time and pay it forward for somebody else, it's amazing what, um, you know, that can, that can do in the long run. So just, you know, I, I just say, just take your time and do it. And uh, you got to be consistent. You just got to make it part of your routine. Whether you do say, I'm going to do one video a month, stick to that one video a month. And then if you get that down, I might could do two, do two a month, but make the content good or make it funny or hopefully both. But, but don't, don't be the yeah. talking head and boring. That, that doesn't work anymore. Some of my videos that are older are kind of like that. That's not really the way to, that, that people want to consume uh, stuff. Now there's a lot of people doing video and they're, they're doing it kind of mediocre. It's better than none. Don't get me wrong, but, but try your best to put out something as, as entertaining as you can. But, but more importantly, just capture what you're already doing. You're already living an exciting life. You're doing things that are fun. And it doesn't matter if you don't think everyone's going to like it. Someone else will like what you're doing, or at least it will be relatable to them. So incorporate what you already have going on is so much better than trying to just create something that you're uncomfortable with. Yeah, I agree. Jenny, do you have any questions? I know Rhett can't hear you, but um, uh, do you have any questions you want me to ask for you? <laughs> <laughs> I have a ton of questions. Um, uh, first okay. of all, okay, other than video, um, what are, you know, he obviously does a lot of marketing. Um, what are some of his other um, ROIs, you know, really good ROIs in marketing? All right. Other than video, what are some of your other ROIs for marketing? Um, definitely, um, you know, just obviously photography images are, are really important, but, but taking the time, uh, to, to really have good, um, you know, Facebook and social media marketing, um, you know, strategies there, not just, you know, putting something out there for the sake of doing it, but just putting a little thought into, into, to what goes out there. Sometimes it's not video. Sometimes you, you, you can put a thoughtful comment together or, or, or more importantly, uh, as far as uh, ROI, we can all do a better job of this right now, showing kindness and love to other people, you know, going and commenting on what they have going on. Uh, that goes a long way. We all sit back, whether we do it subconsciously or consciously. How many people liked my post? How many people made a comment on it? You know, uh, the people that you have in your lives, the people that you want to work with, or the people that you have worked with in the past, especially the ones you've done a good job for. I mean, they're going to be, you know, your, your, um, your advertising uh, platform if, if, you're, if you work it the right way and stay in touch with them. Show them a little bit of uh, appreciation here or there. And sometimes, you know, ask, ask them, hey, who, who do you know that I can help? That goes so much further than trying to just, you know, spend money. I've, I've done a lot of uh, online um, leads and things like that over the years. And, and I'm not going to say that they don't work. They do work, but they're very expensive and they're very it's a hard business to, to earn and maintain. And it seems like where a lot of those a-holes end up coming out of some of that stuff sometimes, <laughs> not always. But, uh, you know, it's a healthy mixture of all of it. But I think just it's really just... Um, be, being out there and being involved and showing up and being present, not just joining in something, but actually showing up and volunteering your time and letting people see what you're all about. But you have to be a little bit intentional about talking about what you do. You may come across, man, I, you know, uh, why do I need to post a picture that I'm, you know, collecting cans for, for whatever? Well, it's because you maybe you want to build awareness around it for other people to, to, to see what's going on. And you can you can uh, you know, spread your influence that way. There's a lot of different reasons that you can uh, you know put things together that work. But you just have to kind of be everywhere and, and think of yourself kind of like a media company, regardless of what kind of uh, media you're putting out. Sometimes um, probably one of the most successful things that uh, we did this past year was um, and it is on incorporate video, but it was uh, um, the. My kids' middle school did some, or elementary school, sorry, had done something they'd never done before. There's um, in the little cluster that, you know, the ones of the elementary schools, there's like three of them. Then there's one middle school, then one high school. Well, they did homecoming parade for the high school at the elementary school, one of them, and then brought the other other schools all over there, basically, to see the little homecoming parade. And it was kind of for the parents to come by and see it. Well, a lot of parents couldn't get off work and couldn't do it. My wife's very involved with the elementary PTO. So I just went live, and I also threw a GoPro and a little um, – the little uh, tripod thing I was kind of carrying around. And I let the parents also, I got all the kids on. I didn't ask for permission, didn't do it. It was basically just shared on my page and then on the uh, social or on the, uh, um, the PTO's page. But I got so much good feedback from that. So many views. Thank you so much. I was at work. I couldn't see my daughter, my son walk by that plays on the football team. And I was putting myself, thank you, in a place that was something that was already going on. I was going to be there anyway. Um, and I, well, actually I probably wasn't going to be there cause I had stuff to do. My wife, um, couldn't be there. So she said, Hey, would you do this for me? Said, Absolutely. Go live. She shared it. And it was, uh, it worked out. Um, uh, like I said, it was brilliant. It worked out fantastic. And other people, even folks that 
than work my clients and clients of other agents in my office and just people in general. Uh, I get more feedback in person for people doing that uh, right there than uh, probably anything else, maybe with the exception of my uh, cooking skills that I have. My wife has to travel, which is letting my kids pick out whatever junk fast food they want. And we post a picture (laughs) about it and we let them know that we're at school on time. So that's another one that's been kind of fun. (laughs) All right. So, so, I mean, video, your sphere, the referrals, besides, you know, those things, what are some of your other lead sources? Ah, lead sources. Um, just gosh, just, just networking and, and being in the same market for so many years. Um, constantly going to these, these events and, uh, and just networking with other people and learning how things work. I mean, that, that's been, that's been probably huge for me. Um, obviously, uh, you know, uh, everyone's always looking for where's the, the magic place to get something from. And gosh, I probably have, I don't know, 75 to hundred lead sources. If I had to be honest with myself, uh, people that, uh, you know, from people to the companies that we work with, from things from property management that come over into sales or different associations that we belong to or, or participate with and volunteer with and all of the above. And uh, it just kind of comes from uh, just trying to do the right thing uh, by people and, and, and showing up and be present. It, it really just adds to all that together. Also, you gain knowledge with it. Knowledge is power, you know, and, and if anyone uh, you know, has a chance to, to want to know about something. I don't mind sharing, you know, an opinion here or there. If there's the paper wants a quote on something, I'll do my best to make sure that I'm not misquoted, but I will share something about what's going on in the industry because I think it's important that, um, you know, one, we, we maintain a high level of professionalism as a group, but also, um, you know, we want to make sure that we're, we're trying to, to, uh, you know, educate people on the way and, and show expertise. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I know we've, We've both been quoted in RIS media and, um, yep. you know, I mean, it, it's really important just to be able to share our experiences and, and it definitely helps being published because then you get that expert opinion um, published out there. So that's good stuff. Um, as far as, you know, I know you've been involved in the association, been a local president. What has getting involved in the association done for your business? Um, I think it, it just helps us stay kind of grounded and tied to what's going on locally. What's the pulse of, of other other local um, agents? What do they have going on? What are their struggles? What is, what's going on, you know, in a, in a positive sense for, for the market? Really being able to have a, a collective voice uh, from different, um, you know, I, I look at it as we're all we're all in, in, in the same kind of boat together. You know, we all need to rely on each other to, to make deals happen. Um, you know, I, I'm a heavy listing agent. I'm not going to work with all the buyers for my deals. I don't want to work with all the buyers for all my deals. I want someone else to bring the buyer for the deal. Uh, it's great if it's someone on our team or another agent, but it, it comes down to, we want to make sure that we keep those relationships strong. Thank you. And when the relationships are good and they're strong, there's a mutual level of respect. I think at the end of the day, um, you know, that that's what it's all about. Um, at the same time, it, it's, you know, you got to stand up for, for what you believe in and what's right. And that's, that's one of the things we always try to do and uh, you know, and, ma- and make sure that we're, um, you know, trying to, 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 you know, elevate, not escalate any situation. How can we, how can we be more proactive? How can we help get behind whatever's going on with local government that's, you know, opposing something that's going to uh, affect, you know, private property rights or, you know, our business or whatever that is. And we can collectively get together as a group and then leverage the state and the national. We've done that several times and that's, that's worked out usually, usually fairly well as, as you can for what, what the people that, that are you know running the, the government are willing to listen to, you know, but, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we keep, have a, a strong collective voice. I think that's important because that's at the end of the day, we, we have to kind of stick together because we all rely on each other. Yeah, no, I agree because especially with what we've been going through recently, we've had to have these conversations with government officials, county departments of health, um, just to be able to be considered an essential business and to be able yes. to have these closings and to show these houses. And so it's been super important um, for us to, um, to have those relationships and NAR is such a, um, you know, powerful association organization from a nationwide standpoint that we are able to get many things done. Um, you know, so I think it's important to get, be involved. I've been a past president or I'm a past president currently. Right. Um, and so I think it's just really important, um, to, uh, to get involved, whether it's, you know, not necessarily in leadership, just get involved in your groups, get involved with, um, 
you know, being able to help out and build relationships with other agents in your market. And I tell you, it's a lot easier to really build relation, you know, be able to do deals with people that, you know, than you don't know. So it looks like we've lost, well, maybe there's, there's red back. So um, I don't know what's going on, but glad to have you back. Um, so we got a little know, storm coming. For, I'm not sure if you can hear what's going on. Maybe my, oh, yeah. my screen's kind of gone a little dark, but it still says live. So hopefully it's still on. Uh, yeah, we're live. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. I guess Rhett, Rhett can't hear me. I don't know what's going on, but um, we'll see if they'll come back in just a yeah, second. I can hear you now. Sorry to kind of cut um, out we'll for me. I think we have a little, out. A little storm was passing through possibly. Um, so can we'll you hear see. me? If y'all have any questions for Rhett, Jenny, or myself, feel free to shoot it in the comment section below. Happy to answer any questions. Um, or, or get Rhett to answer any questions. Um, I've known Rhett for some years, um, and uh, he's been very valuable to our association from a national standpoint. So, all right, you're back. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. I think we'll have a little storm that kind of right. kind of passing over maybe. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. Um, so one of the things that you mentioned was giving back to your community, interviewing small businesses. So, you know, talk to us a, a little bit more about that, what y'all are doing from a community standpoint. Absolutely. Well, well here recently in the last, uh, you know, week, week and a half, we've been really trying to reach out to some other local business owners and talk about like things like the CARES Act. And uh, uh, we have an agent that has worked with some stuff uh, with, with um, uh, business development and things like that in the past. He's actually um, does some commercial real estate with us and has his license uh with us, but also is a professor at the university and uh, kind of well-versed on this. And we, we've uh, sat down and done some research together and had some different business owners on Zoom calls and uh, trying to, you know, give back and let businesses know as it was coming out, as, as real time as we could make it. And there's information that we were giving that, that, that we were, you know, putting out there, hey, we're not really sure what this means. It might mean this, might mean this. But as it was coming out, at least, at least let them know, hey, be, be looking for this have this on your radar, make sure that uh, you can kind of make sure to protect your employees and, and keep them on payroll as long as you can and do some of these things. So that's something very recent that we've done trying to do that. But uh, just really, it's that 15 seconds of fame. Try to try to give them a little video about what their business is, why they love it. Um, it works so much better if you have the, the owner of the company or the key, key manager or something like that um, to really tell the story. Um, you know, they think that Everyone wants to see the person at the front desk. And no, people want to see who owns the company. They want to know what you're about. That's why they do business with you. And, uh, you know, and, and when you can get them to, you know, the, the schedules to align, it works really well. So we have um, James uh, does video with us one day a month and uh, we do a whole day of video, pretty much me and him. And it's the most exhausting work day of the month that I have. He then takes that that content and, uh, you know, comes up with a month worth of stuff to be able to put out. Um, you know, on our different social media channels and everything, but it really gives a chance to talk about what's going on. Really, like, why is it great to live and work in our area? That's what we really want to highlight. And uh, at the end of the day, we've got so much content built up over the years that, like, you know, people can search for this stuff and find it and realize, oh, wow, I didn't know that this was here. This was here. Might not even know about our community, but, um, you know, we soft brand it. We're not ever asking anybody to buy or sell anything on there, but it's got our a little logo at the bottom and uh, you know, hopefully they see it enough times. Maybe they'll, they'll call one of our agents to uh, you know, to ask about uh, maybe what's it like to, to own real estate here or whatever that is. So it's a, it's a very long tail, very uh, non uh, you know, uh, forceful approach, but we, we, um, we interviewed the, the people that are, that are involved in our area. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, guess if, if, if your if your wife or your father-in-law had a, you know, a company in our town, we were in the same market. I would interview them just as much as I would interview someone else because they're doing a good job for our area. And I think it's important that we kind of put it aside about, well, this company, they're never going to use us for real estate because they're going to use Gussie. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, the people that, that, that I work with and my clients, that I'm going to sell houses to, I want them to do business with people that I like to do business with. I like to do business with them. So let's endorse the people that we know and like, regardless of, of uh, little things like that. And at the end of the day, Gussie would turn around and share our posts back out too. Even though we're not talking about buying or selling anything, it was a direct thing to to enhance or augment that that business. And that's the way I think if you approach it from a genuine standpoint like that, that's why it works. Uh, same thing as doing doing these these interviews like this. I mean, you know, I think it's important we all reach mm -hmm. out to different ones because you know we're we're all better learning from each other. And uh, you know that that's that's what this this is all about. And uh, 
hopefully someone you know, is listening to this and they pick up one small idea and actually implement it. And uh, I hope that that, right. that makes them a lot of money. I, I, you know, we, we've all heard the term R and D rip off and duplicate. And look, I, that's why, that's why I created this, this YouTube channel is to put all of our old content back out there again in a way that's a little different to find, but let people see, here's an example of how I'm doing this might not work for you, but take this idea and spin it to do your own version, but do it better. And if you think about it like that, then you'll, you'll realize that there's many, many things that you can, uh, you can put out there um, with stuff you're already doing, just being a little more intentional as it goes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, All right, Je uh, Jenny, I don't know if you can hear me. I can see you, uh, but not on this Be Life. So, so funny. If you got any questions, um, I, yeah, I can't hear you. So I would say write a uh, comment and, and I'll ask Rick. Um, so obviously you got a brokerage. Um, what, what are you doing to help grow your brokerage? Sure. Well, we, we try to make sure that we're, we're providing the maximum amount of value that we can for what we charge with, uh, with what we do. Uh, we, we do offer a cap scenario, but uh, it's not just about the caps, not just about the money. It's not just about the other. I think it's the support uh, pouring into the agents and helping them figure out where, where, what is their business need at this point in time. Uh, hopefully I didn't get lost just now, but uh, really just taking the time and making sure that um, – that we're providing what they need and the support that they need. I think that's as important as anything along with having the best tools and resources and, and everything else that we can provide, uh, showing up the best way in, in, in marketing for, uh, for their clients, uh, letting them know um, what may be a smart place to uh, invest money into platforms versus others. Um, and, and the fact that I am able to travel a lot, I'm able to talk to a lot of these vendors to find out exactly what they do, or I know other people in the industry that, that use those products and at least uh, I tell our agents, like, don't don't buy something until you at least um, research it. But but you can just text me and I can I can set you up with someone that's using that whatever product it is. And that way you can hear firsthand. Is it really going to help your business or is it just going to be something else you waste money on and not use? That's a duplicate of something that we're already providing you for the most part. I'm not sure if you can still hear me, Gusty. I, I may have yeah. cut out. No. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly, man. No, that, that's that's great. Um, you know, tell, tell us a little bit about which, what are your goals with, with, you know, obviously, uh, you've got a team, you've got a brokerage. What are some of your long-term goals for real estate? Man, it's, it's just trying to keep the whole, you know, everything kind of the whole empire just moving forward is what it is. You know, um, having, uh, I've always had lofty goals, trying to get certain sales levels to try to get certain, um, you know, certain numbers and things like that. But, uh, I, I think, uh, my biggest goal is to, to grow at the right pace with the right people. Uh, constantly and uh, you know but, but always having our projection in a, in a forward way and uh, you know sometimes you know we can sit back and look at well we, we 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 gained a few but we lost a few well the ones you lost were they really the right ones anyway if they were you got to figure out what were to correct and, and, and bring it back but also just trying to help uh, the right kind of customers and as many customers that make sense for the, the line of what you're trying to do so I'm, I'm always looking at increasing my numbers I'm always looking at growing team members but um you know, got a got a great great team that we're working with, and everything's clicking very well. And uh, you know, there, there's a lot to be said for um, having everything kind of work together and, and people get along. And uh, you know, uh, I think sometimes we we let numbers get in the way of uh, of, of just trying to, to grow. And then we we you can if you're not careful, you can bring a cancer into your into your your company or your association. And then it starts making things you know revert you know the, the other direction the wrong way. So. I don't know if I answer that exactly the right way, but it's having that forward trajectory, always trying to enhance what we're doing, make the processes constantly better. Um, you know, want to just see, you know, everything grow and, and you know, uh, everyone be uh, more successful uh, every year. And that, that's that's the goal. It's just keep keep pushing forward and keep keep doing better. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Well, I know you mentioned that you're also in property management. What other businesses are you in? Gosh, uh, I've got I got a few. Um, well, I tell you, I'll tell you one of the, one of the things I'm passionate about. You can kind of see my shirt. I just happen to have it on today. I hit the late, but uh, reels for Easter seals. Um, C21's had about a 40 year, uh, uh, I guess, partnership. We're going to call it as our main philanthropy uh, is Easter seals. Easter seals is a hundred year organization that helps people with disabilities. So they encourage um, people that own uh, uh, Century 21 franchises to do something as a fundraiser for Easter seals. So. Um, we started this as our fifth uh, uh, tournament this year, the same lake that we're kind of on right now, Lake Wadawi. We do a, a crappie tournament every year called Reels for Easter Seals. And we had it um, 
uh, basically first um, weekend in March is when we, we had this. So right before everything went crazy, we had a tournament, had the best one we've had. So that's a little not-for-profit that we do um, that, that does take up some time. Uh, I have a couple of different, um, uh, three, four different real estate holding companies that uh, I do own some investment real estate in. Um, I do a little, little bit of stuff where we have and flip with a few of those. Some of them we're just kind of holding and have things that, that we operate out of. Um, the, uh, gosh, uh, trying to think what else I do have. A, I have a couple of little things that kind of just, you know, uh, I guess DJ, DJ Retro was my first business. I kind of still have that. I only do a couple of parties a year, but that was my fun, fun job through college and uh, my first business. So I kind of <laughs> still have that. And it allows me to uh, not feel guilty about uh, staying current on all my music. And if I want to pick up yeah. another speaker here or there or a cool light, but uh, uh, we always try to do a party too, you know, around the holidays at our office and uh, that kind of thing. But I literally, I put myself through college as a mobile DJ and uh, you know, got out of school right. without debt and got, you know, got licensed while I was in school. So it was a good segue. Awesome. I was able to DJ the wedding and sold my first house. So that, that was, hey, I, I that. guess that's for the most part. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, a good lead people can, it, it is. And, and uh, you know, I, I have to tell people no far more than I tell them yes now, just because, you know, three kids being involved in everything. I'm probably seeing them in the background. I think one of my kids was cleaning a fish, if I'm not mistaken, back there that called earlier. But uh, anyway, so they're, they're, uh, they're having fun. And uh, hopefully the rain's not too loud on my, my headset on uh, out here under the little uh, tee top on the boat. But, uh, but yeah, stuff like that, just trying to have, uh, you know, try to practice what I preach. You know, we, we own our office in a holding company. We pay rent to ourselves. Um, you know, I have a, a couple other LLCs we own that we have a, a few properties we picked up over over time. And uh, I think it's important to uh, you know kind of be a little bit diversified there, making sure that you know we we're able to you know take advantage of uh, you know being in the in the industry that we are. And uh, you know, obviously, you know we're always trying to find deals for clients, but sometimes deals work out that the client you know wants to, wants you to buy it. And if that's the case you know, do everything ethically in the right way and disclose and everything else. But, uh, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta take advantage of things like that when they come about, because that's how you're able to further build your wealth. And, uh, you know, economies like this, that are shifting and changing are where the people really come out of the woodwork and really, um, you know, make a big difference. Uh, I, going back in time, the last, last go around with the recession, we started property management because no one was really doing it in our area in, in a big way. We started a business with, with really no money, um, we were willing to do things that people weren't willing to do. And we've grown that to a, you know, uh, over 600 doors that employs 10 people. Huge, and, man. uh, it, it, it really is a very recession resistant. Um, you know, nothing's, nothing's, uh, you know, extinct or, or, or no, nothing is exempt from, um, you know, recession, but it's much more resistant because, you know, at the end of the day, people have to have somewhere to live and owners need to have someone to take care of their properties. But it's like anything else. If you, are going to do something like that, you got to educate yourself. I mean, we went through so much more education on that. Um, uh, thankfully, we didn't get ourselves in trouble early on. We were just learning how it all works. Every state's different, but it's one of those things that you got to do it in a big way. Uh, otherwise, it's just enough to be frustrating. So we took our time, did a good job with that, and uh, we're still, you know, uh, trying to, to grow that with, uh, with the people we have and, and build those relationships and move forward. Hey, buddy, good job. Um, yeah he cleaned, he cleaned the catfish so uh, nice yeah we'll cook it in a little awesome. bit buddy <laughs> so uh what's, but anyway that's uh that's uh, i guess that's that's a little bit about about what's you know what we i would try to offer right yeah no that's awesome man what um yeah have y'all i know for a couple of years there's been instant offers in y'all's market or at least greater atlanta has that really affected y'all in Carrollton? You know, our price point is a little bit lower than what a lot of them like to see, uh, but I can't say it doesn't affect us at all. I think we had the first year that it came about, we had six different platforms in our market. A few of them would work, work with uh, uh, homes in our area. Um, not drastically. Um, I've worked with a few of those companies um, that, uh, you know, that, that when they get opportunities in our area that they can't serve, that they'll, they'll refer those out um, uh, to us. So we close a few of those things. I mean, it's... Uh, Sometimes just people just being curious, what would someone pay for my home? But, you know, we found that the most part, very few people just want to walk away from, from something and not maximize what they need to do. I mean, yes, it's a headache or can be a headache in, in getting things ready to sell a house or have, have things put together, uh, showings, things like that. Um, but I think if you, you know, we try to approach it um, and, and really educate the, uh, you know, the sellers and, and really take the time to get everything done in the, in the front end so that when it does go on the market, you know, we're getting under contract in a few few days versus a few months with the showings. And then that way we can help them uh, maximize what they're doing. But uh, most people don't want to take the uh, the loss there is, is what we have found. I mean, there's yeah. been some, 
But, uh, you know, it's one of those scenarios that we just have to, to demonstrate our value to people and show them, like, look, this is what we could uh, we could do for you. And we, we do have scenarios where you can sit there and say, look, I can offer you an instant offer scenario as well, but this is what it's going to be. Or I can tell you to spend a weekend and clean a few things up and I can maximize your money by this much. But if it doesn't work doing what we want, what we want to do trying to sell it, we can always revert back to doing the uh, die buyer scenario. That's so it's right. like kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah. You know, you need to you know, let me have you know, X amount of days to try to do it. And if you have the conversation like that, people see how drastic it is. Um, uh, it's uh, it's pretty pretty eye opening as far as uh, what people really want because everybody wants the top dollar for their house. Just they don't realize that you know how that all works. That you got to take a kind of a discount in there. So that's that's been the, yeah. the the scenario for us. And it's different for every market. But we're a little more outlying, being that we're you know, 45 miles, miles outside the city, but we are considered part of the Atlanta MSA. So it does, it does definitely, you know, come in our area. Yeah, for sure. What's, um, so, you know, we're, we're in the midst of, you know, the coronavirus craziness, you know, what do you see, you know, once we get past this, what do you think about the real estate market? I think it's going to explode. I mean, I really do. I think in a good way, I think it's going to, going to be, uh, wide open, busy. Um, I think, um, like like any time there's there's a change a major change or something, there will be people that uh, decide to um, either decide to get out or get weeded out because you know they're kind of exposed their processes weren't quite there. Um, you know it's an unfortunate scenario, but that that's kind of how that works. If uh, you know if you relied on fax machines for everything, you've not been able to work for the last little bit. You know, so uh, you gotta um, you know think about it from that perspective. But I think the ones that are really taking their time and staying in touch with their people and and keeping themselves out there doing a few things to add a little bit of uh, joy or, or comedic relief possibly during these, these tough times, a little bit of positivity, not, not just, you know, adding to the negative. Uh, I think they're going to do fine. Um, I really foresee this, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down kind of, kind of um, uh, pretty simply. Um, uh, the inventory sh- scenario is, is just, it's a real problem that we still have. It's far worse than most people estimate about how much of a shortage there is in most every market right. in the United States, there's some major metro markets that, that that did have a lot of construction come back really quickly. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the rest of America. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the levels of construction that took place, you know, call it, call it 15 years ago, but, you know, leading up to, um, you know, uh, the last, you know, great recession we had, um, you know, that's the level of construction we need to happen right now based upon population numbers. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a pretty, um, simple math equation how many people did they have to buy houses at that time versus how many people do we have to buy houses now or at least have somewhere to live so there's going to be a ton of opportunity interest rates should probably stay low um but uh i really think that once everything gets back on track um hopefully uh more builders will come out uh, the woodwork and really get ready and build more uh build more inventory which is what we desperately need um so that we're not losing you know the the the, the people that we need to have to, to stay in, in our areas to, to make sure that they have places to live. So that's a very, very, um, you know, we have school, school systems that are having a hard time for teachers and you have hospital systems that are hiring, you know, doctors and they can't find houses to live in. And, you know, it's a, it's just a scenario that we're all kind of faced with. And I really think it's going to, it's going to really take off in, in a, in a great direction. My initial prediction was the end of the year, we were going to make up a lot of what we had missed out for this. I think this is a little bit longer of a, scenario than I think a lot of us initially anticipated. So I'm not sure what that's going to look like for sure. But uh, mm-hmm. I, it, the real estate market is going to be great uh, once everything gets back to uh, a more a more normal yeah. standard of being able to operate. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I'm very optimistic about everything that's going on. And, you know, we're just having to adapt right now. But, um, you know, I think what this has done is it's made people get off the fence, whether good or bad. Um, the people that are out looking right now are very serious. So, you know, showings might down, be down a little bit, but we're still seeing multiple offers in some price points. Mm-hmm. People are very active. So, you know, it just, um, you know, business as unusual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that's that's um, a very good, very, very, very good way of saying it. Yeah, man. Well, I, well, I want to end on, I know you've got uh, random to real estate. So, could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, I've got a group on Facebook um, that uh, you guys are welcome to uh, to join it. We just have some places that you can kind of put, what are you working on or, or kind of what's going on? What's an example of, of something that you're doing? A good place to kind of get some positive feedback, kind of learn what's going on. 
uh, the YouTube channel of that is is basically where I put a lot of my videos. Uh, pretty much anything that I work on in any capacity, it goes on that channel. And it's a, I think I've got, started this really working on about November. Uh, Andy that works for me uh, is really doing a great job of, of getting a lot of my videos more, a little more optimized for what YouTube is. That's a hard game to play right now, trying to figure it out. But I think we've got 180, 190 videos that we put there. So there's a pretty good um, uh, library of stuff to look at. And, uh, you know, I tell people, go, go find some of those and, and watch parts of them or watch them, you know, different ones that make sense. And just learn, uh, how could you see yourself doing some of those? I'm not going to work out for everyone, but, you know, um, you know, educate some of the stuff you're doing and entertain people at the same time. But there's so much that we know, especially the folks that have been doing this for a while. There's so many things that you know. How can you put that out in, in, a, in a digestible format um, uh, that, that makes sense uh, for, for everyone else to, uh, to, to be able to, to see and understand? That's, uh, that's kind of my, my take on it. Sweet, man. You got any questions for me? Me? You got any sorry, questions Ke- for me? Oh man, I got tons of questions for you, but I think we're probably getting close to being out of time. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're, everything's well, good, man. I, I appreciate you having me on, man. I, I love uh, you've been so kind over the years that uh, you know. Hey, I'm trying to work out this structure with this team, and what do you? How do you handle this? Or what have you done when this scenario comes up? And I, I appreciate um, you always being willing to be that. And that's how you've always been, and that's why. I think that you're at the level of success that you're at now. And, and, and the reason why you're going to be at the level of the success that you are for every stage of your future moving forward is uh, just because you've always done the right thing. Um, you know, I was going to say you get what you give and uh, you, you've been, you've been very, very kind and, and very genuine over the years. And uh, you know, I, I think that collaborative approach is what this, this is all about. We need, we need more Gus. For sure. Gus is in the world for sure. And, uh, well, thanks. I just, uh, yeah, man, definitely. Well, I, I appreciate you having me on. That's why I said, Hey, this is a great, great yeah. chance to, to talk and see what else going on. But, uh, I, well, we'll add one, one thing to it. Uh, and this is for, you know, hopefully everyone can kind of take this into consideration, uh, especially, you know, team leaders, uh, broker owners, agents in general, you got to come up with your elevator pitch for right now for what's going on. And it needs to have a positive spin with it. Um, regardless of what's going on, mine is it, I, I, I go straight to the inventory because that is a fact that's there, that that is a real thing, and people have got to have somewhere to live, right? So that's a that's a, a place that we know that, that real estate is still going to be viable because of that. We're not in the scenario of having too much real estate. The last economy, you know, the the the, the elevator pitch was, hey, if you're a buyer, it's a great time to buy. If you're thinking about investing, it's a great time to invest. If you always have a positive spin on what's going on and be able to rattle off real quick, not, oh, I, I pedal real estate or I sell homes. You got to have the energy behind what you're doing. You got to let people see that, man, this guy knows what he's talking about or this lady knows her stuff. That's what attracts people. That's the extra little stuff that uh, some people have or don't have. And if you don't have it, you can practice that to get to a point where it just sounds fluid. And uh, you know that's something we all have to think about. And, and having those positive conversations as it's, uh, you know, time to have them is so critical right now because there's so much negativity going on, uh, you know, not to get political stuff. But the media is, is absolutely horrible right now and the way that they've really put a lot of things out there. Yes, we've got a serious situation. Yes, there's a lot of tragedy going on. Yes, um, people need to stay home. I agree with a lot of that. But the way that they put things out there and demonstrate it is not good. And that's where the consumer confidence gets lower when they watch garbage like that all the time. Be the positive influence, be the positive voice, and uh, we're all going to get through this together. Be smart, also, you know, be realistic. Um, but uh, you know, when time comes, you know, be ready to, to to move forward with it. But but really, the times now, you just have to kind of change your your thought process and your and your voice uh, to adapt to to what's going on and, and the sensitivity of what's going on right now. That's that's the important things, for my opinion. For sure, absolutely. And I think that's great. I, I really appreciate you uh, ending on that note. Um, how can people reach out to you if they've got referrals in Carrollton? How, how can they find you? Absolutely. My, my cell phone, it's easy to find me. Um, Rhett is spelled a little bit differently. My parents named me Everett, E-V-E-R-E-T-T. So Rhett is short for Everett or so I was told when I was, you know, grow, growing up. So uh, <laughs> Rhett, uh, uh, R-H-E-T-T. Um, sometimes you can find me usually, but uh, that's not the correct way of spelling. So it's R-E-T-T and then Harmon is H-A-R-M-O-N. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm on Facebook. I've got a, um, I'm almost full from friends, uh, but I have a, a business page. It looks very similar. A lot of my stuff gets shared over that Instagram, Twitter. I'm all, I'm all these places. I have a TikTok account, but I've not put a, a whole lot on there. I'm just learning it, but it's, uh, it is kind of entertaining. Uh, we have a few extra <laughs> minutes, uh, I guess going on, but, uh, really if anything, um, that or retro group or century 21 Novus, any one of those, you can find me different, different places. Um, 
the brokerage, I do have some extra help with different employees that kind of help uh, run different aspects of that. Um, but, um, you know, a lot of the video content, if you're looking for that, random to real estate, if uh, you can give a, a subscribe there, I would be very, very appreciative. Um, it was one of the hardest tasks that I did. I got over 115,000 views in a town of 45,000 people on an Elf on a Shelf campaign in a month on Facebook. And awesome. at the same time with the same videos, I, I couldn't get, you know, uh, a few hundred views. And I couldn't even get to 100 uh, subscribers uh, during the same amount of time on YouTube. So I think we're now just maybe 130, 140 subscribers. It's still growing. It's uh, something that I really hate that I neglected. Um, years ago, we had a few things we put out in a few different channels we, we had, but really just trying to make sure that we have all of our stuff there together. But uh, that's how you can get me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, also that's I'll awesome. give you my cell phone number. is 678-520-6381. Text me, call me. We'll set up a time. I'd be happy to share anything I can with you. And uh, I wish everyone the best. Stay safe. Enjoy your time with your family. I'm going to go fishing here a little bit in the rain probably. Um, but, uh, you guys, uh, enjoy it, but don't, don't, uh, you know, don't, don't think this is doom and gloom time. This is a really special time that we'll probably never have the opportunity to do again. So we'll That's end great. on that. Thank you so much, Gusty. Uh, y'all have me. I, I really appreciate it. Brett, appreciate it, buddy. Uh, great talking with you. And, uh, thanks so much for tuning in to get a real, get a real estate life's interview. We've got, uh, great folks coming even later this week too so tomorrow we're going to be interviewing brian tripp thursday Leighton d's and uh friday david lucas so all right good to see you Rhett. thanks man so much. you got a great lineup I'm, i feel honored just to be amongst that group of people man that's awesome yes sir have a all good right, one buddy take care bye